What's up everybody? Out here in the shop today, it's Monday, and we're gonna do some maintenance on a little S10 today. Uh, we want a little no trailer shootout the other night on E85, and I think Billy's wanting to put it back to methanol and change the oil, adjust the valves. We got a little header gasket leak. So we're gonna dive into that stuff tonight. Here we go. We've been cleaning up out here in the shop today. This place has been a, a mess for so long. Finally got the uh, one side of the shop cleaned up. You can actually see the Nova now. That's kind of nice. My lawn tractor's inside finally. Can't believe it. It's been forever. Thanks for helping me, June Bug. So we're gonna go ahead and run this thing up on the lift, drain the oil out of it. Um, go ahead and change oil and pull the valve covers off and run the valves. Um, got a little header gasket leak I wanna get fixed. Um, and I think eventually we're gonna change it back to methanol uh, before he races it again. But between now and then, he may wanna drive around a little bit. So for right now, we may leave it on E85. It's very simple to convert. All we gotta do is switch metering blocks. Well, it won't look too bad. Didn't have a lot of drive time on it on the, they had a little bit. Yeah. Oil definitely stays a little nicer on E85, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I had driven it around on meth, it would be 110 degrees, you know, five minutes into the drive. Right. And you can't get it back up. Yeah. You about just have to not run any water. Right. So, a lot of people ask us, why don't we just drive it on methanol all the time? Well, the problem with that is that on methanol, driving it around, you can't keep heat in the engine. It'll actually cool itself down to 100 degrees or less. Um, the drivability isn't the best on methanol. It's pretty ratty. Um, it's just not... It's just not the kind of fuel you want to drive around on. Um, you know, driving through the pits is fine, this, that, and the other, but to actually drive it, we drove one way. It was about 45 minutes one way the other night for that shootout. And um, for one, the truck's got a 16 gallon cell and um, you know, on, on methanol, it probably gets a mile to the gallon maybe. <laughs> so, on E85, it generally tends to get about 10 miles to the gallon, 11 miles a gallon, somewhere in there. Depends on how he's driving it. And, uh, you know, when we drove out there for that shootout the other night, he was running 65 miles an hour on the interstate or on the freeway, highway, whatever you want to call State Route 16 out through there. It's a four lane. He's running 65, 70 miles an hour. No trouble. But uh, anyway, who are you on the phone with? Hey, who is this? I think I know who that is. Who is that guy? It's like that, that broken English, the stuttering. <laughs> it can only be that one guy. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm out here taking film for my channel right now, and I'm filming this. Oh, shit. It's Richard Garcia, 660 Street. Hey, man. Hey, congratulations. mailbox of 405 <laughs> Hey, congratulations on getting hooked up with Hughes, man. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're getting there, man. We're getting there. Good deal. Yeah, he... They weren't supposed to say anything. They just posted. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Pete was probably pretty excited. I know I would be. Hughes, baby. How you like your Nova? <laughs> oh, man. Is it a small tire? The what? Small tire race. Yeah, small tire. Okay. Yeah, that's just been a man. I should have said. I just I figured you know Thanksgiving. You know you guys gonna be away from the family or whatever. Yeah, well my birthday's Thursday. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And it's, yeah, it's on
We're getting low on brake clean. We need to go get some brake cleaner. Okay. All right, you ready to set it down? Yeah. Filter's on tight. Do we need to check anything else underneath of it? Clean it up or anything? I'm gonna check some bolts. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that while it's up in the air. What are some of the things you generally try and check, Billy? Converter bolts, bell housing bolts. Yeah, I motor usually, mount bolts. I usually check all of that, um, especially the bell housing bolts. When you have it, you know, the engine solid mounted, the transmission solid mounted, you got a lot of vibration, so tend to come loose sometimes. We try and check all the transmission cooler fittings and the dump valve fittings. And then we need to go through and check like the U-joint, U-joints and the suspension bolts and shocks and all that stuff. Cause we've been driving this thing and beating it up pretty good here lately. It's time. Just generally just try to go over it and check for leaks. And... What are you doing June pup? Hmm? Hi, sweetie. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you love your papple. <laughs> she loves her papple. What you doing, sweetheart? You love your papple? Does you love your papple? You're so <coughs> What's Uncle Billy doing? Do He's making noise. You better get him. Get him. All right, let's go ahead and take that valve cover off. Got it off, I had a phone call here in the middle of filming that. All right, let's grab our tools and we'll go through all this and plug the coil. I need to put a bump switch on this thing. So we've got this valve shut. We snug that up. 20,000. It's got just a little drag on it. So we just go down the line. Um, How do you know for sure if one's shut? Well, you watch the valve shut. You bump it just a little bit past wherever the rocker arm comes all the way up. Do you have to wait until the one next to it is all the way down? I don't something? get into all that shit. And I'll tell you right now why. Because there's always somebody wanting to jack jaw and ask questions and I can't concentrate and I just get lost so I just go to every single one of them make sure the damn thing's shut because anytime I'm anywhere even out here in the shop the phone never stops ringing and the questions never stop so bump it over again well good go ahead bump it again again well, that's the one I set with a credit card. It's just a little tight. This credit card might be like 17,000. Yeah, something. Camp card called for 15 or 16. 15 or 16 on the intake, 18 on the exhaust, something like that. I don't give a shit. I set them at 20. Yeah. Again. 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 Bump it. Bump it. Whoa. Good, bump it. Again, 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 again. Wow. Holy 
headers make it a bitch to check them out. Bump it again, again. How often would you recommend checking your valves if you ever run a solid roller cam? Depends on what the cam and how much you street drive it, how hard you rev it, and the valve spring pressures. Like this is a fairly mild roller. It's only 660 lift. It's it's not a real big camshaft. So when I spec this camshaft, we intentionally bought it a little on the small side because we knew we were going to be driving it on the street a lot. And we didn't want to abuse the valve springs and the retainers and the keepers with ungodly spring pressure and all that. So this is a very low maintenance engine, at least it should be. And it generally is, as long as we're doing the right things. But, um, you know, this is a like a 660 lift solid roller. We run 20 thousandths valve lash in it. I don't remember what the intake duration is. If I said it out loud, I'd have to listen to John Booley cry for another six months about telling everybody what his camshaft was. So I'm not gonna deal, deal with that shit. I don't know what it was now. I don't remember. Got it somewhere, but it's a fairly mild cam. It's like a 116 center line, 660 lift. On this particular application, they probably ought to be checked once a month depending on how much you're driving it, street driving it and everything. All right, I've tightened up the stud girls. Now I'm just gonna go through and snug the poly locks up. There's no need to cram these things and over tighten them. You just run them down until they get snug and give them like a little eighth of a turn or so. Right there, just snug them is all it takes. A lot of times I never even tighten the poly locks. But on this, since I know you're gonna drive the wheels off of it. Ooh, that one's a little loose. All right, so what I'll do is just go through here and just loosen up the stud girdle just a little bit. You don't wanna take it completely loose. You just wanna loosen the stud girdle bolts just enough so that the Poly locks will turn. You don't want to take it completely loose. You want to keep pressure on it because regardless of what one what stud girdle you use, as you tighten the stud girdles down, you'll notice that the the, um, the poly locks will all come into line with the stud girdle. So you don't want to take a lot of the pressure off as you uh, as you adjust the valves. You want to keep the stud girdles fairly tight. Keep pressure on the poly locks that they don't move. And then we want to just go ahead and back off the set screws in the poly locks. Just go ahead and do all of them real quick. That one's all the way out. Slide that up in there between the roller. See how it's got a little bit of drag on it? It's just about perfect right there. All right, go ahead and bump it and I'll get to the next one. set the poly locks too. Yep. All right. Let me just go down through there with the Allen wrench and snug the poly locks down. You don't have to crank these now. I've always run just these standard uh, rocker arms. Harlan Sharps. Always run just cheap stud girdles and the jegs. Poly locks. Very inexpensive. Both trucks have the same stud girdles, the same rocker arms. 
same cylinder heads. And I, we've kind of intentionally done that in case, like if we've got an important race one weekend and Billy's running his truck and we need something, we can scavenge it off our Tommy's truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we try and keep everything as identical as we can. So you that need... we've always got spare parts for one or the other. I've never broken a rocker arm. No, we've never broken a rocker arm. We've wore them out. Yeah. We've wore them out to the point where the the trunnions are shot, but we've never snapped one. We've never broken one. We've broken a, a couple of rocker arm studs back when we were running three eight studs because when we originally built this truck, I robbed the valve train off my Nova and my Nova always had three eight studs because way back in like 96, the very first set of roller rockers I bought were 3 H stud Harlan Sharps because they were uh, they were in double hump heads. So I had 3 H rocker arms. And when I bought my Brodix heads, of course they had 7 16 studs, but I still had 3 H rocker arms. So I didn't have money for any rocker arms. So I just went ahead and put 3 H studs in my Brodix heads. And that's <laughs> that carried on all the way until we built this and we ran three eight studs in this for quite a while and you know as your YouTube stuff started to take off and you had money to do on your own and you've been buying all your own stuff for what a couple years now right yeah so when Billy started to when he could afford to start buying all his own stuff uh, he, he went ahead and bought the correct rocker arms and we put good stuff on it what about a year or two ago yeah what we consider good stuff. Yeah, I mean, what we consider. <laughs> it's all relative. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to have, you know, Jessel shaft rockers one day. That's yeah. expensive stuff. We'll get there someday. We'll get there someday. But there's nothing wrong with this stuff. Like, like what people don't understand, I know, you know, people raise hell. You should do this and you should do that. And you should have all this high dollar fancy shit. Well, here's the problem, guys. When we're out in the middle of Oklahoma or Kansas or Texas or Louisiana, New Jersey, New Jersey, especially New Jersey, right? Because I'm mad in New Jersey all the time. But in, wherever we're at, you could be out in the middle of the night, one o'clock in the morning, and just like the other night, you know, when we were down there in uh, at the pad in Louisiana, we need a distributor gear. Well, you can find small block Chevy shit in the dumpster at Walmart if you have to. You know, you can't swing a dead cat in Louisiana without hitting somebody that's got a set of rocker arms for small block Chevy in a bucket someplace laying in a garage. So we run stuff that we know someone somewhere, even a bracket racer, would have some of this stuff. You know, it's not high dollar parts. It's very common stuff, pro form Stud girdles, Harlan Sharp roller rockers, you know. Yeah, not everybody's going to have a Jessel shaft mount rocker laying around. Right, right. And we just use common stuff that we know. It may not be the fastest, but this truck's very consistent. If it, if it fires, it's going to go down the road. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, a lot of people piss and moan because we don't have fuel injection. We don't have a you know, data logging and all that crap. Well, guess what? <clears throat> that carburetor doesn't give two shits about a little bit of dirt. It never sticks an injector. We don't have injector problems. We've only, we've got two fuel filters on this and I think we clean them out maybe once a year. It's very low maintenance. It just doesn't care. It'll eat or drink just about anything you put through it. It just doesn't care. It's very reliable, you know? When's the last time we ever had a carburetor problem where we got stuck in the middle of the night and the truck wouldn't run? Never. Never. The only issues we've ever had usually is just from the distributor getting some moisture in it. Yeah. And that poor carburetor has been blamed for every problem this truck has ever had on the internet. Every time we nip a head gasket, every time something happens, oh, it's the carburetor, it's the carburetor. That's the same fucking carburetor that's been on that thing from day one 
and it wasn't the damn problem. I get so sick of hearing people bitch and cry on the internet. Well, you need fuel injection. No, we don't. We're only trying to make 15, 1600 horsepower. The problem for a long time was trying to run E85 without an intercooler with turbos that had too small of an exhaust housing. Yeah, we were listening to an internet blowhard that he wants everybody to think he's somebody and maybe he is to somebody, but he ain't shit to me. You getting it okay? Yep. I get this side all cleaned up. I'll go find a funnel so we can start putting oil in it. Found my Kent Rose funnel. That's the funnel I always use to put oil in stuff. Things almost wore off of it there where it says Kent Rose, but I know what funnel it is. Gina Rose gave me this long time ago. matter June she's fussing not enough action for her out here tonight you want to go in the house no, you just want to go for a ride or you want to do something we use a pin grade brad pin 2050 in this because it's on methanol that's the main reason I've just got over 20 some years experience in using this oil and I've never had nothing but good results on methanol and ethanol so we're not sponsored by them nothing like that we buy this stuff down at uh, A1 Auto Parts down at Buckeye Lake my buddy Mark gets the stuff in for us filters and everything he keeps everything we need down there for us so if you need some place to buy Brad Penn or Penn Grade Motor Oil, stop down and see old Mark Huntsman down at A1 Auto Parts in Buckeye Lake. He keeps that stuff in stock for us down there. Wicks racing filters and everything. All right, 11 520 is the last time we changed it. What's the date today? 21st. 23rd. All right. Now we're in trouble. The boss is here. No, I mean, you're not in trouble when you're cleaning. This is, uh, I see more floor. Yeah. We've been busy. I got all them yes. fuel drums moved hey, back there. Oh, shit. It's getting to be that time. Look, I got this all cleaned up. You can actually see the Nova now. Well, it needs a map. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, that needs to happen soon. We got to go get a Christmas tree? In the S10, like you did last year. It's like a new tradition. Yeah. Right that Christmas tree last year, I think it's still alive. It's laying out there along the side of the it, building. It, it wouldn't die. <laughs> die. It's still alive. <laughs> and I saved the snowflake that you made out of spark plugs. No, you didn't because we picked it up off if the floor back alive, there. We'll just put it back in here. <laughs> <laughs> so last year we put a Christmas tree out here in the shop. I don't know what the hell that thing was made out of, but it would not die. It was out here until March, I think. Yeah, it was. Even, like, water it. <laughs> I don't know what the heck was going on with it. I wish I had something to drink that it got a hold of. I know that. Yeah, we need to cover up them seats up here. You don't want to just leave those getting dusty. Are you going to come out here with Christmas lights and do all that shiznits again? I mean, I'll provide the lights, but Tommy can climb on the rafters. That's a Tommy job? That's a Tommy job. We did have Christmas lights out here last year, didn't we? Yep. We had a little shindig. Oh, that's right. New Year's. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that, do no. we, Billy? It was a rough night. <laughs> it was terrible. All right, so we got the header gasket replaced on this side. We got the oil change. It's full of oil, drain plugs in, I hope. Yeah, yeah I did. I tightened the drain plug. And um, let's see. I need to hook the coil back up. The orange goes to the positive. I think orange is on the top. So we got the valves adjusted. Oil's changed, header gasket's replaced. 
Ready to fire it up? Yep. All right. Sounds fine. Oil pressure good? What did it carry? 65 pounds of idle. You go up to about 80 when I revved it? Yeah. Yep. So what's next? I gotta put the front brakes on my Silverado. Oh, okay. We gotta pull the shit wagon in here tonight. This What'd is, you get? This is a core support I ordered. Aluminum? Yeah. Sweet. It's all TIG welded. And it, it kind of kicks out because my radiators yeah move forward oh i see so hopefully that gives us enough room for the radiator and the, the cold side sweet who makes this jesse lee deviance fab where's he from uh, i believe he's out of wisconsin nice so how soon will this deviance fab so, so he said they'll ship tomorrow really so sweet should have them in the next couple of days so you got a three-piece grill for yours yeah and a one-piece for tommy's yeah he makes uh one piece and three piece how much were they i believe they were like 300 350 a piece yeah holy shit yeah Whew, they're nice though. all right so we're gonna pull the shit wagon pounds. we're gonna pull the shit wagon in yep all right fire this thing up and i'll get the door Don't forget to check out all the incredible photos and posters available for purchase at srcphotos.com.